let me tell you something about war. War ain't always about fighting. Blood, bullets, death. Yeah, yeah, that's part of it. But it sure as hell ain't all of it. Sometimes, it's about knowing when to turn tail. And run your fucking ass off. This is it, people. Saddle up! Storm's about to hit. What is up everyone, Barricade here, and today I'm bringing you guys episode 26 of Gears of War Lore. Today I'm going to be talking about Michael Barrick and pretty much what happened to him after the events of Rom's Shadow. A lot of people were asking me, you know, what happened to him afterwards? We never saw him after Rom's Shadow, we never got to see what happened to him like in Gears of War 2 and 3. And I got a little bit of a story here to say, and it kind of has a sad ending when it comes to Michael Barrick. But before I go into that, I'm just going to go ahead and give a little bit of a backstory regarding his childhood. When he was in school, he was a little bit of a outcast. No one really liked him and he was kind of more to himself because he was always doing things he wasn't supposed to. Growing up, he got married and then had a bad divorce, which led to him losing a lot of money and his possessions to his ex-wife. Thus making jokes about her like when he fought the Berserker and when he said ah, she was almost as tough as my ex. Pretty much making a joke on how evil his ex was to him. Uh, after Gears of War's Rom's Shadow, he did uh, work with the COG obviously because he was a COG soldier who actually joined with Operation Lifebolt. Similar to that of Dizzy where he had to become a gear in order to survive and no longer be stranded. When asked why he became a gear, he simply stated, being a gear is a hell of a lot more interesting. Pretty much stating that it wasn't due to a noble cause, he just had more fun as a gear. Sometime after Rom's shadow, about four years later actually, he was stationed in Timgod, an area near the light mass emulsion bombing that killed the locusts in their stronghold. He was actually a part of a squad called Echo 9 and was led by Sergeant Jonathan Harper, who also I actually made a lore about, so feel free to check that out. I'll put a link in the description regarding that lore. Um, but he was stationed with Jonathan Harper, and after the bomb went off and killed all of the locusts at the end of Gears of War 1, he unfortunately got sick due to emulsion poisoning and being exposed to a lot of the fumes thanks to the bomb. This led to him being diagnosed with rust lung, a cancer-like illness that basically kills you from the inside out and causes you to cough up blood as your lungs slowly deteriorate. After he was diagnosed, he asked the doctors how this could have possibly happened, but then was lied to by the doctors who covered up the actual cause of the illness. The COG didn't want anyone to know that in a sense they caused a lot of their own soldiers to die due to an illness that they caused with their own bomb. Distraught Barrick actually felt really angry due to the fact that he was going to die due to an illness rather than dying as a badass. And I completely understand that from a personal standpoint. How much does that suck to be fighting grubs for 14 plus years and then find out that you're going to die from a cancer-like illness out of nowhere? You can survive so many grubs in a total badass way, but you can't survive an illness. That's the thing that really sucks. Several weeks after this happened, he got stationed with another squad completely separate from Jonathan Harper and became with the squad known as Echo 6. He was with this squad for a while, but unfortunately they died when they were outside of Jacinto during a mission. He was by himself and kind of stranded and needed assistance. He was later found by a squad consisting of Marcus, Dom, Jace, and a few other gears. Marcus and Dom's mission was simply to find any surviving gears, and Barrack was the only one that they were able to find. Shortly after this, he was assigned to Marcus and Dom's squad and sent on a mission to actually investigate huge seismic activities that had been starting up really badly after the light mass bombing. The thing that's quite funny is they never mentioned this in the comics because of the fact that the comics were trying to keep it a secret at this time, but these seismic activities were obviously the giant worm that was arisen thanks to the light mass bombing in Gears of War 2. After Gears of War 1, when the light mass bomb blew up the inside of the hollow, it actually woke up the giant worm, causing cities to be sank. Barrick never got to live long enough to see this, unfortunately, and this is why in his next mission. Their next mission led them to a city known as Montevado, where they were going to actually investigate the seismic activity. This is where it actually started from, and they were trying to figure out what could have caused the seismic activity. 
Barrack actually asked Marcus and the squad what the hell are they looking for, like what is it going to even look like? What is their main point of even being there because they don't have any type of like tools or equipment to actually investigate these seismic activity. The COG kind of just sent them out there hoping they would find something. Everyone kind of agreed with Barrick because it made sense that they can't really figure out what's going on. They don't really have the tools. They're just hoping to find something there to give them a clue. Marcus and Dom decide to split up in two-man squads with Marcus going with Barrick and Dom going with Jace. They're investigating the area to get any type of clues when suddenly they're attacked by Wretches and other Locusts. As they're battling the Locusts, out of nowhere the whole entire city of Montevado sinks and it almost looks like they're going to die. Jace gets hurt and is actually covered in a boulder but is able to be saved by Dom who removes the boulder. Barrick is also okay but his, most of his armor actually got damaged when the city sank. They suddenly get swarmed by a huge amount of locusts covered from side to side and they have no chance of escape. They're also attacked by some strange creature that's only shown in the comics and I wish it was an enemy in the game known as a heart leech. It's basically a giant leech that tries to latch onto you and kill you. It looked pretty wicked and I kind of wish it was in the game. They get attacked by so much locusts, heart leeches, a corpse are and completely surrounded but they're able to luckily push far enough to make it to an area where it looks like they can escape. Marcus and Barrack actually hold off all the locusts while Dom and Jace escape. As Dom and Jace escape, they actually come across some survivors from the city and help the survivors escape. While Marcus and Barrack are still holding off the locusts, Barrack randomly decides to tell Marcus, I can take him. Get your ass up there too. Marcus tells him, What the hell are you talking about, Barrack? There's way too many. Barrack says, No shit, man. That's what I'm telling you. I already smoked the last one in the pack. Just go, man. Go. You got a squad to get out of this hellhole and starts fighting the locusts barehanded with nothing with him to assist them. Literally no armor, no weapons, just goes in with his bare fist and takes out a bunch of locusts, ripping them in half, beating their asses and just going out like a total badass. He's killing a bunch of locusts as Marcus escapes and is eventually, unfortunately, taken down by a beast rider with a hammer burst. Marcus, Dom, and Jace are able to escape. Jace unfortunately has a close call with the Berserker, but luckily it all ends happily with them all escaping with the survivors and able to make it back to Jacinto. Jace actually makes a little bit of a reference to what he was told with Marcus and Barrack, basically saying, Later we heard about the sacrifice Barrack made, and I can only guess how tough it was for Marcus to honor his last wishes. So that's pretty much the end of Michael Barrick, unfortunately. I honestly really liked him a lot in Rom's Shadow, and I loved how he went out like a total badass, literally with no weapons, barefisted, ripping locusts in half, and going out just amazingly. He was a really cool character. He was kind of strange and kind of a weird, angry guy, but overall he was really cool, and I thought he was an interesting character that I wish didn't die, and I would have really loved to see him in the events of Gears of War 2 and Gears of War 3. But anyways guys, if you guys like this video, please definitely hit that like button and subscribe and tell me what you guys think about today's episode of Gears of War lore. Do you guys think Michael Barrick was a total badass? I really wish he stayed around. But anyways guys, thanks for watching and take it easy. Thanks for watching this video. If you want to see my most recent Gears of War video, hit that link on the left. If you want to see my most recent Dragon Ball video, hit that link on the right. Thanks for watching guys.